Hey folks, this is Eric, and I am going to attempt to show you how to hook a website that is hosted at SiteGround up to CodeGuard for backup. Um, and I'm going to preface this by saying that I find this to be buggy and not always easy, so um, we're going to cross our fingers. You have two different ways to connect, FTP or uh, you can select WordPress website, in which case you put in a WordPress plugin. Um, personally, I don't like this option as much because I don't think it's as robust and um, I prefer not to have to load WordPress in order to back up the data. And this is a direct connection rather than loading WordPress. So we're going to choose this. You put in your website URL. In this case, we're, we're using this site, stmichael.org. I'm going to put that in here. And... Uh, for server name or IP address in cPanel, I'm going to just grab the IP address of this cPanel and go back. Username, you use the username from cPanel. In this case, it's usually this little sucker right after the home directory. Um, depending upon your cPanel configuration, it might show it up at the top if you've got Web Host Manager. So I'm going to put that in there. And uh, SiteGround does not allow connections to SSH or via SSH on port 22 or via password so we have to use uh, a key and in my case I think the easiest way to do this is to add a public key to the server um, that shows the key you copy this key um, go over to site ground and in this case I'm in file manager so I've gone from here to file manager and I'm going to open up at the home directory show hidden file say OK then we go to the SSH directory, and there are two, fold, two files here. Authorized keys is for SiteGround. Authorized keys 2 is for us. Um, so I'm going to edit this file, and this is an old attempt for me to do this. So I'm going to, uh, I am going to paste in the credentials here because it seems like every time you do this, it changes the credentials. So let's see here. What window was I in right here? Paste that in. I'm going to save it. And so that should allow us to connect to SiteGround via SSH. There's one last thing we need to do, which is SiteGround does not allow connections on port 22 for SSH. It's 18765. We'll put that in there. Click Test Website Connection. And if all goes well, this is what we should see. And this first step one here is asking you to select your root directory. And um, of course, we could choose this, which would back up everything within their account, but it's also going to back up a bunch of cache files and a bunch of configs, log files, and other crap we don't need. So what we're going to do in this case is just back up public HTML. Remember in cPanel, www is just an alias, alias for public HTML, so this is really all you need. Um, so I'm going to select root directory, and that should crank away for a moment. And ideally, it'll come back and show us in this folder below, in step two, which website content that we can back up. I say ideally. Could be that there's a lot of stuff in the directory. I'm not sure why it's taken so long. There we go. All right, so now we've got step two here. Here's our public HTML. And really, we're going to just select all there. Um, there's some stuff that we don't really need to back up, like FTP quota. We're not using the CGI bin. There's a bunch of iCal files in here that we really don't care about anymore. Um, and uh, I'm going to leave those in there for the time being because I'm not sure exactly why they're put there or if we need them. Um, there's an error log. We don't need to be backing that up. Uh, there's here's another strange directory, whatever. I think that's it. I think this is um, Croft that we don't need. So begin first backup. So now we've added the website. So all this is going to do is get files, not the database. So um, now we're going to click Add Database. And again, it wants our host name or IP address. We'll jump back here, grab IP address again. Test connection. Um, and so it's saying it can connect with our firewalls. If we click Next Steps, it should give us some IP addresses that we want to make sure are set up in cPanel. Um, so 
in cPanel in or order to make reliable remote MySQL connections. We need to click on Remote MySQL, and then we're going to just take these little IP addresses and add them in there one at a time. So, there's one, add host. Oops. My click juju is like no other. I'm so good at copying and pasting, I can barely function. All right, so go back, add host. <laughs> Make this look so easy, don't I? <laughs> All right. This does not feel right. I don't think I got them all. So, I think I'm missing four six. Yes. So we'll add this in here. So this tells the server that it can accept remote MySQL connections from those IP addresses as well. We've done that. Click Next Steps. It's going to ask us what the uh, MySQL username is. It's still got the um, connection there. Um, so, um, so I'm dilly-dallying because we could try and tunnel over SSH. Honestly, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that to work, so I'm going to show you how to do this without first. Um, so what we're going to want to do is go back in and make sure we understand what the username and password is for, or not the username and password, but the username for that database. So we're going to go into public HTML. And then in WordPress, of course, the database information is shown in the wp-config file. So I'm going to look in the wp-config file here real quick. I guess I don't need to show that to everybody. And I can see the database name is this. So we will pop in that and then the password. That and then we're going to click next steps and it should show us which databases that user has access to. We'll click Add Databases, and we should be done. It'll start backing things up. Um, so that's really how to add people to CodeGuard. Um, good luck. May the force be with you.